This video is the third in our series of onboarding videos designed to help you understand all aspects of the Qualaroo product. In this video, we'll cover targeting. After you finish putting together the content of your survey, you'll be able to dictate where and how the survey appears on your site. How you target your survey is absolutely essential to how well your survey performs. It's extremely rare that the optimal targeting setting are 100% of all site visitors. So when considering the information you're looking to gain, ask yourself, who is the best group to be responding to the question that I'm asking? The more focused your targeted audience, the higher the quality of the responses as well as the response rate of your survey. Targeting is broken up into four main groups. The Where section focuses on the portion of your website that has the ability to fire the survey. The two options available are simple URL targeting and advanced URL targeting, which is controlled with regular expressions. The Who section focuses on the specifics of the people who visit those areas of your website. We give you the ability to set the percentage of traffic, as well as behavioral, technological, and some advanced options. The When section focuses on the visitor activities at the page level, most notably a timed delay and our exit survey functionality. Finally, the How section allows you to indicate how often visitors will see this specific survey, or the survey frequency. Let's start with the Where section. There are several configuration options available within the simple URL option. It's important to note that this section supports both the HTTP and HTTPS sites, as well as those with www in front of the domain. For this reason, you don't need to specify either when using the simple URL option. If you want to target your entire website, type in the domain followed by a slash and asterisk. The asterisk acts as a wild card, essentially telling Qualaroo to target anything beyond this point. If you want to target only your homepage, simply leave off the slash and asterisk. If you want to target a specific subdomain, such as your blog, add that before the domain name. We automatically target all subdomains unless otherwise specified. To target a specific subpage, simply add the path name after the domain. You can add an asterisk if you want to target the entire subsection. Finally, you can focus on just one specific page by entering the entire URL. Our advanced URL targeting option is only available to those in our professional and enterprise plans and requires some cursory knowledge of regular expressions. If you're not familiar with regular expressions or what this option can do, we have an excellent guide to using regular expressions for URL targeting within our Help Center. Here are just a few examples of where you could use this advanced option. Investigating high bounce rates is a very popular use case, and since you generally know which pages on your site have the highest bounce rate, it's easy to focus on just those pages with the use of a regular expression. Note that I surround all pages with parentheses, but I separate each page with the pipe character. This tells Qualaroo to target page 1, page 2, or page 3. No other pages on my site will have the ability to fire the survey. Another popular example is having the ability to exclude an entire portion of my site from firing the survey. To create what's referred to as a negative look ahead, I use the name of the subsection I want to exclude. In this example, we'll use store. I surround that path with parentheses and place both a question mark and an explanation point in front of the path name. This tells Qualaroo to target everything on my site but that particular path. The dot star characters I've surrounded it with will act similarly to the asterisks within the simple URL area. Finally, it's common for customers to want to target visitors coming into your site from specific ad campaigns. Typically, marketers will track these campaigns with UTM codes, and in using these codes, that enables you to target visitors that have these codes appended to the URL. Using this regular expression, I can show the survey to only the group that has that UTM code within their URL, meaning they came into my site from a specific Google AdWords campaign. These are just a few examples of where regular expressions can be used. To learn more, visit our guide in our Help Center. Now let's move down to the Who section. The first thing this section allows you to do is set the percentage of your web traffic that has the ability to see the survey. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, it's rare that you'll want to target 100% of site visitors for a variety of reasons, most notably because you'll want to avoid survey fatigue for frequent site visitors. Use your best judgment when setting the percentage of traffic, and you're encouraged to play with this number until you're satisfied with the view count to response ratio, otherwise known as the response rate. We give you additional options beyond simply controlling the percentage of traffic. To use the options under Behavior, Technology, or Advanced, click the radio button under Percentage of All Visitors Who Meet the Conditions Specified below. The first area includes behavioral aspects of your site visitors beginning with where they initially came from. The Came From Anywhere on the Web option should only be used when you want to focus on everyone, combined with another option under the Who section. If you're not selecting another option but want to target all visitors regardless of where they came from, select the first Percentage of All Traffic option. 
Next, we have came directly to your site. For this group of visitors, we can assume they're familiar enough with your brand that you can ask pointed questions about your service, such as running an MPS question. The opposite side of that same coin is came to your site from a search engine. This group is typically in discovery mode, which means we can ask them which of our competitors they're also considering or which search terms they use to locate our site in the first place. Finally, there's the came to your site and the referring domain is or is not. This option is typically used when you're trying to target people who are coming to landing pages or if they came from a very specific site that wasn't a search engine, such as Facebook. We also include the ability to focus just on returning visitors. It's important to note that Qualaroo considers someone a returning visitor if they come back after a 12-hour period has elapsed. This may be a great way to differentiate visitors who are just in the discovery phase versus those who are more seriously considering your product or brand. One of our other delay options is the ability to delay a survey by several pages. This is a great option to pair with questions surrounding the findability of information on your site. The last option under the behavior section will only appear if you have other surveys under your domain. It allows you to display the survey you're currently working on if the site visitor has interacted with a previous survey. This is a great option to use if you want to ask follow-up questions to the group who responded to an earlier survey. The technology section allows you to exclude site visitors on a particular browser. This is a great option if you're noticing some irregularities with visitors on specific browsers. For example, if the conversion rate of IE visitors is half that compared to other visitors, you can easily use Qualaroo to target that group to uncover the issue. The last section under the Who area focuses on advanced scenarios. Most of these options are only available under the professional and enterprise plans, but the two options available to everyone are the ability to target logged in visitors and whitelisted and blacklisted visitors. If you have an option on your site that allows for visitors to log in, consider adding our identity API. This API gives you the ability to push details of your visitor's identity, whether you use email addresses or IDs to identify them, so that you can target both logged in or logged out visitors. The added benefit of this option is the fact that we expose their identity within the response interface. Additionally, the whitelist blacklist option allows you to target or exclude specific site visitors from surveys. Since this option works in conjunction with the identity API, you'll have to keep in mind it only works for visitors who are logged in. The next option is available to members on our professional and enterprise plans and gives you the ability to target optimizely experiments and their variations. This is a great way to gain qualitative data behind why certain experiment variations outperform their counterparts. Another popular use is to A-B test Qualaroo surveys. If you're torn between two possible ways of phrasing a question, you can easily split test those questions with this integration. The next three options are only available to our enterprise customers. We'll cover each of the options briefly. The option to target visitors in certain geographic locations allows you to target the country the visitor is in when they come to your site. The option to target visitors when a custom property is matched allows you to set properties that are specific to your site and visitors, like plan types or whether they clicked on a certain button, and you can target based off of those properties. This option utilizes our JavaScript API, so you have full control over which priorities you set within Qualaroo in order to target based off of that information. The last enterprise level option is the ability to target based on specific cookies present within your visitor's browser. If you'd like to learn more about our enterprise plan, you're welcome to contact Sales for a demo. Next, the When section allows you to target actions at the page level. The first option gives you the ability to fire the survey immediately after the page loads. Generally, the only time you'll want to use this option is if you've targeted a confirmation page that your visitor sees after they've completed a conversion action, or your survey is targeted in a testing environment. The second option allows you to set a time delay at the page level. If you're not sure which option to use first, we generally recommend using this option with a five second delay. You're encouraged to look over the average length of time visitors spend on the pages that you've targeted, but it's relatively inexpensive to adjust this option until you're satisfied with the response rate. The third and most popular option is only available to our professional and enterprise members and allows you to target visitors who are about to leave the page. We sometimes refer to this as the exit survey option. It's invaluable for those who will want to investigate pages with a high bounce rate or shopping cart abandonment. The fourth and final option allows you to fire the survey after a visitor has scrolled halfway down the page. This is a great option for pages that have a substantial amount of information below the fold. The last option for targeting your survey allows you to set the frequency of your survey. The first option is the gentlest of nudges and allows you to show the survey only once. If a site visitor meets the targeting criteria, this option will show the survey to that person once, then never again regardless if they've responded to it or not. This option is recommended to those who frequently run surveys or if your survey question allows for a write-in answer. 
The second option, which is more aggressive, will continue displaying the survey until a visitor provides a response to at least the first question in your survey. It's important to take the first question within your survey in mind, as well as how broadly you've targeted the survey when setting this option. Abusing this frequency option could potentially lead visitors to submitting false answers simply in an effort to make the survey disappear, so use your best judgment. You can always switch back to the only show once frequency option if you feel you're starting to receive lower quality responses. The third and most aggressive option will continue to show the survey every time the targeting criteria is met, regardless if the visitor has provided a response. It's rare that this option will be needed in a real use case, but it's a helpful option to select when you're testing your survey. There are two more options that don't affect how your survey is targeted, the activation options and the notification options for when you start receiving responses. We currently have two options for activating your survey. The first allows you to manually activate and pause your survey, which can easily be done with the options button from your dashboard. The second option allows you to select a date range that your survey will be active from. This option detects the time zone within your visitor's browser to see whether or not they're within the accepted window. Finally, we give you several options for receiving email notifications when responses are given to your survey. We default to sending you a notification every time someone responds, but you can easily select another option that better suits your needs. The second option will send you an email notification when you receive another 10 responses. This can be a good option if you want to stay on top of the responses as they come in, but may not want to see an email with each individual response. The third and our most popular option sends you an email each day with a digest of the responses collected the previous day. The fourth and final option will only send you one notification, the first time you receive a response. This can be a great option for those who simply want to make sure the survey is getting responses, but would prefer not to get regular emails. We allow you to send these notifications to anyone you choose, but we default to the email address associated with your account. To include more people, simply separate their email addresses with a comma in this field. That's it for understanding the targeting section. Up next, designing your survey.